In the last video on OTA via BLE, we covered how you can use the Blue Droid stack in ESP IDA to accomplish OTA. We even talked about what OTA is and how we send data packets, flash them, and boot the next partition section. We ended up our video with a bit of explanation of code and uploading firmware over BLE to our ESP32 device. We also promised that it is not it and picture of Ibaki and Miridos. In this video, we shall look into app rollback and explain the process, warn you against breaking your device, and eventually show you an application you would love. So hang on tight. Namaste and welcome back to Avinashi Tech. Here we explore the world of embedded systems through DIY projects, hands-on tutorials, and practical tech breakdown. If that sounds like your thing, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss out. Previous OTA case was just in. Let's step it up. In the task we added earlier, I'll now introduce a bug. We will try dereferencing a null point. Build it. But again, we won't flash it. Back to monitor. Confirm we are still on the last updated partition. Back to PowerShell. We'll run the OT script. Firmware uploads successfully. But as soon as the board reboots, it crashes, then resets, and again, and again. Checking the logs, yup, we have hit a guru meditation error, classic core panic. Now here's the problem, the board is stuck in a boot loop and we have lost OTA access. We would now need to flash over serial once again. What if we could recover from something like this automatically? Wow! Let me first comment the bug and then head to our whiteboard. Firstly, we will need to enable config underscore bootloader underscore app underscore rollback underscore enable option in HDK config. Before we dive into implementation, let's quickly revisit how Partition table plays a role in OTA and rollback. In our setup, we have two main OTA partitions, OTA0 and OTA1, which store firmware images. Along with that, we have an OTA data section that keeps track of which partition should be booted next. Now, each firmware image goes through various states like valid, pending verify, undefined, and so on. Here's how it works. After a successful OTA update, inside the OTA main task, when the control value becomes OTA done, we call ESP OTA set boot partition function. If rollback is enabled, and yes, we will enable it in this video, the firmware state is set to new and not pending verify. Sorry for the slip here. Then the chip restarts and OTA data tells the bootloader to load this new partition. After booting the new firmware, its state transitions to pending verify. This is our chance to run self tests, maybe check sensors, peripherals, or key boot time functionality. If all test passes, we mark the app as valid by calling ESP OTA mark app valid. If the test fails or we manually call ESPOT mark app invalid, the state becomes invalid and the device rolls back to the last known good firmware. And here's something critical. If the device reboots before we explicitly mark the app as valid or invalid, the state is marked aborted and that too triggers a rollback. So that's the flow. It's pretty robust as long as we implement the checks properly. Now, how do we implement this? 
So after updating, we let the new firmware run for 30 seconds. If it panics or crashes before that, like our guru meditation here, our firmware state will change to abort it and we will roll back to previous version. But if it runs stably for 30 seconds, we perform a simple diagnostic like reading a GPIO pin that we will initialize in the app. If that diagnostic passes, we mark the firmware as valid. If not, or if the app crashes before that, bootloader automatically rolls back. Now you can go ahead and change that 30 second interval as per your needs. Also, you can play along with the diagnostic function as we've already discussed. So let me go ahead and add that timer part, add the code to timer callback, then enable the rollback option, and finally for diagnostic configured, the GPI opens. Now I will try to build this code and correct any errors that I encountered. All right. The board is currently stuck in a reset loop from that buggy firmware. Remember. So let's flash this clean build over serial again. Then back to monitor. Great. We are booted into the factory partition and no more crashes. Now for the final test, I'll uncomment the null pointer dereference bug and build this again. But not flats at this time. Only monitor. Back to PowerShell and we will run the script. The buggy firmware with rollback enable uploads. The board resets, starts running, and boom, board panic. But here's the twist. Since it didn't last for 30 seconds, the app never got marked valid. Result, bootloader rolls back to the previous working firmware. You will see the debug logs, and after successful OT update, ESP resets and boots from OTA0. But since core panics and since the app status was reported, we see the rollback in action and we are back to our stable factory partition. Let me now comment out the bug simulation section in the code and add a simple log statement for validation. We'll build this firmware but not flash it serially. Instead, we'll upload it using a routing script. Once the OTA update completes, you will notice that the system boots from the OTA0 partition and boom, our log message is printed right there. After 30 seconds, we see the message, diagnostic successful, marking firmware as valid. Perfect. This confirms that our firmware survived the test window and has now been marked as valid. That's the rollback working as intended. Now let's see what happens when the OTA process is interrupted mid transfer, like if the update crashes or the client cancels it. So I'll wait for 30 second timer to finish, then switch to PowerShell, scan for VR devices, and initiate and OT update. You'll see the transfer start. And after a few moments, I'm going to cancel the upload midway. Back on the device side, this triggers a disconnect event, and as expected, the ESP32 goes back advertising mode, followed by logging the message we configured earlier. Rollback didn't occur here because the new firmware never got fully written or booted. All good. For the next scenario, I will upload a simple UART based firmware that doesn't include the OTA boilerplate code. I'll update the file path in our OTA script and then switch to the monitor screen to watch what happens in real time. Let's run the script and upload. After the transfer, the device loads the new firmware and boots from the updated partition. But here's the catch since this firmware doesn't include OTA logic, 
system get bricked. No OTA services are running in and we can't push new firmware over BAE. To recover from this, we will have to flash the firmware serially again to bring back that OTA functionality. Whoops! Lesson learned. Now we are off to our climax. Let me show how you can make use of this OTA boilerplate code and make an application in real world scenario. In addition to the already existing OTA task, I will add a task to read my one wire based DS unit V20 temperature sensor and another task to display messages of the temperature in degree Celsius as well as the OTA status on my 2 cross 16 LCD display. There is already a video that I have made on how to do this interface between ESP32 and ds one v 20 sensor. You can check it out in the top right corner or maybe find it in description. We will be making use of a queue synchronization object here between the ODA task, ds one v 20 task and LCD task to send LCD messages. All right enough. Let's build this code and flash it serially. We will open monitor screen and we have the code running with temperature logs on screen as well as on the LCD display. Let me bring a glass of cold water and put the sensor in to witness the temperature change on my LCD. Next up, we will close the monitor and power up our device using a power bank. Now let's add some small changes to this code by replicating real world demands to update. After building this code, make sure to update the firmware pin path in the script. Running the script now. We find the device and when the update starts, we see OTA in progress message on our display. After a few moments, let me cancel the update midway and this causes the LCD to display message OTA about it. Then after a board reset, let me again run the script, but this time allow it to complete. After waiting for a while, we are almost done and are reaching the end of packets. Once updated successful, we witness OTA success message on the display and our device boots again to the updated firmware section. And that's a wrap on OTA rollback with PSP32 over VA. We explored how rollback adds a layer of safety to your OTA updates. From understanding firmware states to simulating disconnects, crashes, and even breaking, we covered it all. In the end, we even treated you with a real world application. So, whether you are building a product or a personal project, you can now be confident with OT. And yeah, always include a rollback cancel. It's not just good practice, it's a lifesaver for your embedded devices. If you learned something new today, Make sure to give this video a like, share it with fellow developers and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for your support. Keep building awesome things. This is Avinashi Tech signing off.